Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the self-esteem business. My industry is education, and the tools that I use daily are water, wind, and sailboats. So how do we get there? How do we get to self-esteem? How do we get here? Well, sometimes it takes failure. It takes capsize. It takes wiping out. But it's the recovery that we have when we capsize or have a failure that leads to the self-esteem building moment and confidence. In, in sailing, we actually teach children how to wipe out, how to flip over, so they can recover, so they can keep going on their journey. He's upside down, but he's gonna swim around to the side of the boat, he's gonna grab, Danny's gonna grab that dagger board, he's gonna get this boat right side up, and he's gonna continue on his journey. And that, that is a confidence building moment, and it's a self-esteem building moment. So there he goes. Let's hear it for Danny, getting the boat back up. So it's the recovery. It's the recovery that keeps us going on our journey. This happens to be my daughter wiping out in a, in a sailboat, so had to go through that. Nice job. But it's, again, we get it up, we keep going, and we move on, and it's wonderful. So you're in Newport, Rhode Island, and you've met a sailor. Yes, I'm a sailor. Shocking, I know. But I've been in sailing all my life. I've taught sailing at yacht clubs and sailing centers. I was a sailmaker for 12 to 15 years, and that was a great experience because I got to go around the world. I went around the world and taught clinics, and I taught uh, lectures. I taught people how to use the product that I was selling them, sales, to make their racing experience better or their cruising experience better. So yes, I'm a sailor. And you would think that everyone in Newport was a sailor. But it's shocking, actually. It's, it's, very, it's amazing to me how many people on this island never have the opportunity to go sailing or be on the water in any capacity. There's barriers, physical and economic. The physical barriers are the privatization of our waterfront. There's nowhere to just kind of go down and throw your dinghy in the water or go throw your sunfish, or, or it's, it's hard. And then there's the economic barriers. Sailing's fairly expensive. You know, we have a lot, you know, boats are expensive, moorings, docks, those things are expensive. And you know, and Newport is a very economically diverse population. Nearly 65% of our school children in the Pell Elementary School are on free or reduced cost lunch programs. So these barriers are real. The barriers are real. And sailing and learning how to sail teaches valuable life lessons. Self-reliance, teamwork, perseverance, failure, success, problem solving, environmental awareness, and respect for the environment. These things are so important to teach. And we've done a reasonably good job of that over the years. Our little nonprofit at Fort Adams State Park has brought tens of thousands of people sailing. We offer free programs with groups like the Martin Luther King Center. We provide financial aid programs to uh, families who can't swing the cost of, 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 of their uh, children, excuse me, going through a sailing program. So we've done a good job. We've done a reasonable job, but there's more to do. There's much more to do. So what we've done is we've worked with community leaders, educators, and people and the teachers in the Claiborne Pell Elementary School to put something truly special together. But I'm going to get to that in a minute. We are in a new era of education. Education is changing. And I got a quote here from Sir Ken Robinson in one of the most lauded TEDx presentations ever. He reminds us that there is a shift in the educational paradigm, one that exposes students to new opportunities. Nurturing creativity, diversity, thinking in the abstract, and the interaction of different disciplinary ways of seeing things. That our task is to educate the whole being, and not just that part of the brain that gets us into a college or a particular job. So I believe that each and every community has something that can provide an experiential link to the classroom. So what is that? This link can further that creativity, the understanding of the community around them, 
and I believe we've done that here in Newport, Rhode Island. Because education is local, just like politics. Education is local. If you live in Newport, you have different environment. If you live in Saskatoon, you may not have a water-based experiential program. You may link with their incredible progressive forestry program where they measure bears' hibernation patterns by the berries they eat. Can't you just picture a, a fourth grade student going into the bear den, collecting the scat, and going in and po literally poking the bear to see if it was awake? I think sailing might be safer. <laughs> so what do we do in Newport? What do we do? We link the kids' students or, uh, studies to our harbor, to our natural classroom. And ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the Pell School Sailing Program. Let's hear it for the kids. We needed to fully commit. We've done a reasonably good job of getting into the schools. We bring ocean racing adventures into the schools to prog program with the teachers to learn about different areas of the world, to link a geography lesson with an ocean race. We've done that successfully at the, at the elementary, the middle school, and the high school levels. However, there was more to do, and this was our task, to make sure that we provided that experiential link to fully integrate a sailing experience into the academic school day. So, what happens? We worked with the teachers, we worked with the administrators, and we worked with the students and our sailing instructors to get this thing started. We have 178 fourth graders in the Pell School, and each one of them comes down for a 16-week sailing program throughout the course of, the, of their school year. They come during their school day, they arrive by bus, 25 of the kids go upstairs to the classroom, and 20 go on the, 25 go on the boats. Each of them receives a focus question of what that plan is for that week. It could be weather, geology, it could be geography, it could be mapping, it could be any of the topics that they study in the classroom. So they go sailing, and they learn about that focus question, and they learn about that lesson for the week. Same thing in the classroom. They come, out, they come down, they work in the classrooms together to solve problems, to work things out, and then they take that and put it on the water. For example, a math problem. Let's figure out some areas of triangles. Sales are triangles, right? And then you talk about the loading, and you talk about different pressures, and, and, you do, and you can bring that directly to the water and learn about leverage and teamwork and self-reliance and build self-esteem. So we're very proud of this program because it's not only the children that are in the classes, it was us. We learned something. We were providing a lens to see their home and their community in a different focus. So the teachers, the teachers were truly outstanding. The teachers did not have to do this. This was one of those projects that they had to, a, a leap of faith. All of us are creatures of habit. Teachers aren't, are the same way. They know everything about their classroom, where their pens are, where their paper is, what lesson plan they're doing the next day. They didn't know what was gonna happen but we worked together for over a year to make sure that we had everything in place. 
Another, another story about this program that I'd like to share. I go down to the, to the dock one day, and uh, one of the boats is tied up. They're waiting to leave the dock to go sailing in the sailing program. And I asked this little girl who's playing with the water. She has her hand on the water. She's swiping at the water and uh, just waiting to leave the dock. And I said, oh, have you ever been on a boat in the harbor before? And the, the little girl says, no, I've never touched salt water before. And they live an, a mile and a half from one of the most iconic places on the earth to go sailing. We needed to do this. And nerves. I wanted to talk a little bit about the nerves. The kids were nervous. This was so far out of their comfort zone. When they came down on the bus, a lot of them have never been on the water. So we had to conquer that. About a month ago, I went into the schools bringing this ocean race that's coming to Newport in May. Uh, we're talking about that. We're doing a live call with one of the teams, our local team, in Cape Town, South Africa. We're waiting for the Google Hangout to, to get connected. And I said to the kids, I said, you all were in the fourth grade program, right? How many of you, you all were nervous? I, did I just say you all? <laughs> How many of you guys were nervous? And they all put their hand up. When they first came down to the program, they were nervous. At the end of it, after Pirate Day, when we did the big scavenger hunt, when we, when we went around the harbor and sailed all the way to the Newport Bridge, who was nervous that day? Not one student put their hand up. And to me, that was a success. There were successes on many levels, but the nerves was one of them. So this is Cordell, right here with his hand up. Cordell was probably the most nervous sailor we had most nervous student we had, and he was not happy. When he first got down to sail Newport, he was crying off the bus. He did not want to get on a boat. It was completely foreign to him. But I'd like to show you a little bit about Cordell's experience. You'll see him with his parents. You'll see him rubbing his eyes out of the bus, but let's see how it ends up at the end. And you'll know Cordell because he's got awesome hair. Awesome hair. Spinorama. Let's hear it for Cordell. So a couple things that the teachers have told us uh, about, this, about this program that they didn't expect. They didn't expect the, uh, the, writing, the writing, the journal entries that they do to get so much better. When a, when a kid is, or when a student is put into a um, uh, an exercise where they're reading a few paragraphs and they have to write maybe a paragraph about what the, what the scene is or what they're reading on the page. It can take somewhere between 20 and 35 minutes. And what the teachers were saying is that when the students got back to the classroom, that the engagement that they had from the experience on the water and in our classrooms out at our facility at Sail Newport, that made a huge difference and the journal entries took between five and 10 minutes. Same paragraph, sometimes two, it made a real difference. And that I'm very proud of, and that's something to build on, and that's something to study for the future. Because we have this opportunity, because we're not stopping this program. This fourth grade program is going to be permanently endowed. We gotta make it happen. We gotta continue the focus into the community of other experiential programs. We need to export this to other sailing type organizations around the country, and we're starting to do that. And I'm very proud of our team at our place for getting that accomplished. So, thank you very much. I'll take it. They take it. 
So ladies and gentlemen, we saw this opportunity to change the way our young students view their community and ultimately themselves. We've provided a program that supplies a foundation, a foundation for creativity, and offers a way to see things differently, whether it's their community or the subject matter that they're studying in the classroom. We don't simply teach sailing. Remember those life lessons? Perseverance, problem solving, self-reliance, situational awareness, respect for the environment, environmental uh, knowledge. Well, those things can be taught in thousands of ways. We simply add water. Thank you.